Now the standard takes it one step further and I want you to please look at my timeline. You will remember we have indicated that if there is a loss that we need to identify if there's future taxable profits. If our answer is no, we may not recognize a deferred tax asset relating to that loss. But now paragraph 35 indicates to us if there is taxable temporary differences. Remember, what is a taxable temporary difference? A taxable temporary difference will be future profits. Therefore, we provide for a future tax payable. We will have to credit our deferred tax liability in our statement of financial position. We provide for a future payable. Again, debit our deferred tax and our profit and loss. Right. Okay. Now the standard indicates us. If there is a taxable temporary difference, we may recognize a deferred tax asset, but only to the extent, only to the value of that taxable temporary difference. Therefore, when you identify that there is a taxable loss in a scenario, you need to first identify if there's future taxable profits. If your answer is yes, if it's yes, you may recognize a deferred tax asset. If your answer is no, you may not recognize a deferred tax asset. Then you need to identify if there is a taxable temporary difference. If your answer is yes, you may recognize a deferred tax liability first relating to that taxable temporary difference and then you may recognize your deferred tax asset to the value of that taxable temporary difference. Now let's have a look at paragraph 35 on the left side of your screen. The existence of unused tax losses as strong evidence that future tax profits may not be available. It makes sense. If you look at a set of financial statements and you identify that there is a large loss in that current year, the standard indicates to you that that is evidence that there might not be profits in future. Okay. Except if you can prove this, that there will be profits. Now, if the entity has a history of losses, we recognize only the deferred tax asset arising from our unused tax losses or tax credits only to the extent that the entity has sufficient taxable temporary differences or convincing evidence that sufficient taxable profits will be available. And there is a criteria in paragraph 36 in terms of probability of taxable profit. Now, Let's have a look at this in terms of our deferred tax calculation. Okay, so when you look at our deferred tax calculation, I've included my prior year as well as my current year. Now, let's have a look at the prior year scenario. If we have calculated, let's say for example, a taxable temporary difference of 200,000, Therefore, we may recognize a deferred tax liability. The taxable temporary difference of 200,000, therefore, this will result in a deferred tax liability of 56,000 if this is a tax rate of 28%. Right, now, we have calculated in our current tax calculation, we've calculated a taxable loss to the value of 300,000. And 300,000 times 28%, and this will be an amount of 84,000, right? Now, first, we had to identify if there will be future taxable profits. Now, our answer is no, therefore, we may not recognize a deferred tax asset. Now, second, we need to identify if there's taxable temporary differences, Yes, there is, to the value of 200,000. 
Therefore, if there's taxable temporary differences to the value of 200,000, we may recognize a deferred tax asset in terms of this 200,000. Therefore, if you look at my deferred tax calculation, let me just include my brackets, deferred tax liability. We may now only recognize a deferred tax asset to the value of 56,000. Do you see the actual amount is 84,000, but we may only recognize a deferred tax asset to the value of 56,000. Therefore, if you had to include this in your line item unused tax loss, you will include your 200,000 temporary difference. This will be 200,000 and your Deferred tax asset will be the 56,000. Therefore, the net deferred tax will be zero. We recognize a deferred tax asset only to the extent of our taxable temporary difference.